ask you, what gains have you seen in the past few years in computer science? Um, do you have any kind of um, thoughts around the statistics or supporting these gains, and especially in the K-12 environment, where I think we want to start initiating, um, kind of getting them excited and engaged in computer science and STEM education? When I started doing this work, and you know, I'd be flying and I would end up sitting next to somebody and they'd ask me what I do and I'd say I'm working on you know getting more women into computer science they would be like why what's the problem like oh my wife uses her phone all the time you know like there was just this <laughs> this lack of understanding that there was even a problem when it comes to computing and um for the large part, most people were not aware that computer science was missing from the schools. And part of that had to do with the conflation of ed tech with technology education. The people perceived that because computers existed in the schools, that computing was being taught in the schools, which we know is not true. And um, I remember speaking with the school board of a very, very large school district in Texas and there's, they said, well, of course we have computer science. You know, we spent 10 million last year on IT. I'm like, okay, well, you probably spent 8 million on buses. Is every one of your students getting a CDL license? No, like <laughs> use of technology does not equal learning the creation and um, innovation piece of technology. So I think we've made vast strides in terms of awareness broadly in the public. Um, I think that um, the early adopters for sure have jumped on the boat, right? So the folks who want to jump into every new education trend, they've jumped on. I think where we're lacking, I think, or lagging is the schools and districts that um, are already overwhelmed and they are um, perhaps waiting for a mandate. Um, and there have been lots and lots of efforts pecking at different pieces of the challenge. Like we have to train teachers, we need to have curriculum, we need to have standards. But some of the gaps that have been kind of left, and this was really a cart and horse problem, but we now have standards in most states. We now have um, teachers and schools are aware, but there's virtually no colleges of education that are preparing teachers to teach those, those standards in pre-service. Mm -hmm. And so one of the big systems challenges is that, you know, why would a college of education prepare teachers to teach computer science if there's no licensure for them and no standards? Well, now that we have licensure and standards, we haven't, we, we've, we're five years behind on developing the pipeline of faculty and researchers and, programs within the colleges of ed. And so that's um, one of the things we're really trying to tackle now. And um, last fall with CS for All, we announced something called CS for Ed, where we had secured $20 million to fund five, um, no, five, four centers for excellence for computer science education at four colleges of education, not in the colleges of computer science, because that's where most of the money for CS education has gone, has, into, has been into colleges of engineering and computer science, because that's who NSF has been funding. So these are $5 million endowments into four colleges of education. And we specifically chose schools that prepare teachers of color. Because wow. this community is going to happen, right? The community of pre-service faculty and researchers and everything in the colleges of ed, and if we lead with colleges of, that serve teachers of color, then that sets the standard for inclusion from the beginning. So it's UT El Paso, Georgia State, um, Cal State Dominguez Hills, and um, University of Florida. So each of them right now is actually, I've been seeing the ads hiring their endowed faculty into these centers, and it's super exciting. Um, so we're hoping that that leading edge in those schools helps sort of set the pace so when the federal money does come down for pre-service computer science, that um, there's already some models and a community of practice out there. So we have made a ton of progress. The, the main thing that worries me is, um, 
you know, and this has come straight from CS for All's um, script program, is that direct to teachers only is not the solution because the school district really controls what is taught in the schools. And individually training teachers is wonderful, but if that teacher leaves, you've got a hole. So making sure that it becomes part of the core of that school's um, directive is important um, and that it's prioritized. And then I am very concerned about quality. And I have seen um, even in, in articles on online where people were like, yeah, and anyone can do it. And you know, the good schools have really robust programs and other schools have have a uh, hour of code, everyone's coding. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> there is a big difference between a rigorous K through 12 computer science progression and <laughs> doing some pullout activities here and again over the course of school. So I think that's important to um, make sure that the quality is, um, is equal across the nation. Do you feel like um, since now we have um, um, advanced placement uh, with a couple of computer science courses, that that also is elevating not only the quality, but kind of setting the standard that these are AP level courses and can be taught at the high school level to benefit everyone involved? I think so. And I do think that the important thing about the AP is because AP is what college going students do. Mm -hmm. um, so it, you know, it's part of the system. Lots of people want to come in and be like, disrupt, the whole education system is broken, let's disrupt. And I'm like, well, the education system is incredibly persistent and trying to go around it is not a solution. So doing things like um, making sure it counts towards college admission, making mm -hmm. sure the credits transfer, um, connecting with your local universities to ensure that your a that your ap computer science classes are preparing the students to actually skip that first year of computer science in their college mm -hmm. um the thing that worries me is if we have you know ap computer science principles is a survey course it is uh -huh. not a deep programming course so if all the kids are getting is apcs principles are they truly ready for college level computer science or are we kind of selling them a bag of goods and hmm. i i just want to be sure that they're all getting really high quality computer science because right. if you're walking into college and you're like oh whoa i am really not ready that's for students who are already underrepresented and don't feel like they belong that's a way of tracking them right out on the first day. So I think that um, APCSP is very useful in introducing kids to computing and what it can be. But I don't know, I think you need to take another course after that to be truly prepared for college computer science. 